calculate the depth of mud, H, for which the 3 meter concrete retaining wall starts to tip over. And you're given that the density of concrete is 2400 kilograms per meter cubed and the density of the mud is 1760 kilograms per meter cubed. The first thing you got to do is figure out what forces are acting on this wall. You're going to have the weight. You've got a 3 meter by 0 0.8 meter wall. You've also got some horizontal force here due to this stop keeping it from sliding along the wall. You have a normal force from the ground and you're going to have this distributed force from the mud. The distributed force from the mud will be linearly increasing as you decrease in the depth h down to a pressure at the bottom of rho times the rho of the mud rho g times h. Now, for any distributed load, the equivalent point load is equal to the area under the the load intensity diagram. So in our case, the area under the distributed load load intensity diagram is equal to one half h is the height of the triangle times the base of the triangle, which was rho of the mud times gh. This is the pressure on the wall. Now, if the pressure on the wall, you can double check, but you're still going to need to deal with the depth. The force on the wall is going to be one half rho of the mud gh squared times the depth into the page. Otherwise, your units don't work out. So in our case, f is one half 17 60 kilograms per meter cubed, that's rho of the mud, 9.81 meters per second squared, that's gravity, h meters, that's h squared, times your depth into the page, whatever it is. That gives us 8632.8 h squared times that depth. Now the weight you also have to deal with, the weight is just going to be, it's the concrete density times gravity times the volume. So here we've got 2400 times 9.81, that's rho times gravity, times 3 times 0 0.8, those are the planar width and height, and then again you need the depth into the page to deal with an actual force. This gives you 56505.6 times the depth in newtons. Now, once you have all of your forces on your free body diagram, you could do equilibrium. The sum of the forces in x, the sum of the forces in y, each of these is going to give you, you know, a equals f, and the normal force is equal to weight, but in general, that's not what we're looking for. What we need to know is what's going to happen when it tips, or rather when it doesn't tip. Tipping is one of those things that makes you think about moments. As it tips over, the weight of the concrete is no longer sufficient to overbalance the weight of the mud pressing. You have this at point A. You have the weight tending to turn your point A clockwise. You also have the mud tending to turn it counterclockwise. Those are the two things we want to balance. And if we, if you think about it, what happens to the normal force? As it tips over, your normal force has come all the way to be acting at point A. So at the magic point we're talking about, the only forces we have are F and the weight. F from the mud and the weight of the concrete. The weight of the concrete acts halfway through the distance, which is 0.4 meters. The weight of the, the force from the mud acts at H over 3. The centroid of a triangle, remember, is a third of the way from the big end. These are the two things I want to have balance, one to the left and one to the right. So if you plug that in, the weight of the concrete acting at a distance of 0.4 meters and the force from the mud acting at a distance of h over 3 from the bottom of the page. Now your depths cancel, which is nice. So I have 22602.24 and 2877.6. Now I have h cubed. So if you simplify that a little bit and take the third root, you get h equals 1.9878. That's what we're looking for. You've got to go back and remember to answer the question. Calculate the depth h of the mud. As soon as the depth of the mud exceeds 1.99 meters, your concrete retaining wall tips over.